Hi, Dustin Klein with Smart Business. I'm here with Judson Green, Vice Chairman and former CEO and President of NavTech. Judson, thanks for joining me. Thanks for asking me. Excellent. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about innovation and how to create an innovation organization where culture, creativity, all those things thrive. Um, how do you spark innovation in a team of people? Well, I think you need to begin with a foundation. Um, when I came to NavTech in 2000, um, we had a very broken company and we wanted to remake the company. So I'm a big believer in creating a foundation or a framework which really becomes the basis for everything the company does. We started by defining a vision, uh, which we frequently use uh, in the company, not just with ourselves, our employees, but with our customers. A mission, uh, a culture, a set of values and behaviors, a set of strategies, which we update every year, uh, specific initiatives to achieve those strategies. And when you have an environment like that, that is well communicated to everyone, and everyone knows that that is what this company is about, and this is how the company is going to operate with respect to its behaviors, for example, then I believe you have a foundation for individuals to be creative and innovative because they're aligned with the vision and mission mm -hmm. of the company. They're excited about knowing what the plan is. And then they can let their creativity and innovation uh, run wild, if you will, within that framework or foundation. I think that's essential for any organization to be successful at creativity and innovation. Once you get that foundation in place, what are some good techniques to foster that creativity and to keep it moving? Well, there are many things you can do. Uh, it, I think, is something that uh, needs to be uh, in the DNA of the CEO and all of the, of the management team. I think there are specific tactics that you can employ, for example, uh, we created an innovation portal at NavTech, an intranet, if you will, that is designed to capture ideas from all of our employees around the world in 70 different countries. And it's, it's a lot of fun, actually, because the employees become a community. Mm -hmm. And it's, if you will, they, uh, with their collective voice, raise to our attention the best ideas, those worth pursuing. Um, we, we channel those ideas, not just from the foundation point of view that I just explained, but also here are five or six priority areas for the company. We need your help. We need your ideas. And it's been very successful in coming up with things that sitting around a conference room table, I don't think we would have come up with on our own, but by turning on the collective brain power of all of our employees around the world, uh, it's a very powerful force. And I think we found a way to harness that, that raw innovation. Can you give me one example of something that came up through that well? Um, well, for competitive reasons, I probably won't be very specific, okay. but what we're involved in is uh, making digital maps, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds easy, but it's actually quite complex because we're, we're adding more and more what we call location-based content to a fundamental map. And that uh, content becomes the rich uh, DNA, if you will, of, of all kinds of LBS applications. And so one of the key areas that has been uh, very useful for us is if we're talking about a certain kind of a content that we need to acquire in India, for example, mm -hmm. how do we get it? What's the most efficient way to get it? What is a non-traditional way of getting it? Um, and again, when you turn on the collective brain power of people around the world, some of our employees in India, but for that matter, the collective brain power of people in countries all over the world, somebody may have come upon a particular method or a particular source or a particular approach that has applicability elsewhere. Uh, and this tool helps us find those, those competitive advantages and take advantage of them. Do you have a process in place for testing the viability of ideas before you decide to greenlight it? Absolutely. Um, we have many processes in place. In fact, I think I've learned over the years that uh, uh, you know, having well-defined processes and continually improving those processes is really the key to, to long-term success. So when it comes to a new product or a new piece of content that we might be providing mm -hmm. to our customers, we now have a well-tested uh, development process and a series of gates that uh, our employees take this product through so that we're in, uh, assured of, of the integrity of the data, the accuracy of the content, and, and, the, and the effectiveness of the product before we release mm -hmm. it to customers. And then we have an independent quality division that, if you will, um, 
uh, keeps us all on our toes by measuring very carefully mm -hmm. uh, the mistakes that we do make and making sure that we collectively figure out what are the root causes and how do we get it corrected immediately. Interesting. You know, it seems like you guys developed your own marketplace based on, uh, you know, talking to CEOs that they say the two things you have to do. You have to find obvious ideas that people want and need, but sometimes you need to explain to people that they want and need it. It sounds like with a lot of what you did that you really developed this marketplace to make it so that it's a must-have, want and need, GPS on my car, GPS on my phone, those types of devices. How do you develop those kinds of marketplaces, then grow the idea, and then really be able to tweak and improve it? What are the keys to that? Well, more broadly, what we're talking about is when you're talking about location and where you are, um, there are a series of questions that consumers have. Where am I? Uh, what's around me? What am I looking for? How am I going to get there? So we're constantly putting ourselves in the minds of consumers. What will help them answer those sets of, those kinds of questions? Um, I, I will say that we have, uh, you know, thousands of employees around the world who are passionate, if you will, about discovering these places, capturing the information, and sharing it with our consumers. But I would say a source of the innovation is equally from listening intently to our customers. We're not a B2C brand. We basically support other businesses, the automotive companies, the internet mm -hmm. portals, the handset manufacturers, the wireless carriers, and a variety of other businesses. And I think what I, we pride ourselves on is that we have done, a, I think, an excellent job of working very hard to understand our customers, to make sure that our relationship is deep, that our communications are frequent, so that together we can use their collective brain power as to where some of their products and services might be going, so that we can anticipate that in advance and make sure that when the time comes, we've already thought through how to deliver the content so that their applications uh, are effective and successful. Excellent. Judson, I appreciate you sitting down with me today. Thank you for talking Thank to you me. very much.